Ladies and gentlemen, there she is. We look at her every two weeks, and she's always looking radiant. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Ronnie Bennett. Good morning. Hardly radiant. Ex-wife and bottle washer. Yeah, hardly radiant. Why are you hardly radiant? What is the... I've been in bed for a week. Really? Why? Sick. Oh, Called okay. Sick. I mean, what kind of sick, though? Temperature, body aches, low energy... Um. Uh, yeah, I mean, name it, and, and you know, I didn't know that I, I still don't know whether I have Corona or not. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And uh, it's uh, you know, and just exhausted. I, I, my temperature has been normal since last night. Okay. Since, what's today? Tuesday. Um, since Monday night, and it was again this morning. I'm still tired. I'm going to go out when you and I are done because I need to go to the pharmacy and I want to keep ahead on keeping the freezer full unless in case I am sick, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, um, uh, and it's just, you know, I've crawled out of bed to come to the computer and answer email or something now and then, but mostly I've just stayed in bed and yeah, I tried to binge watch things, but I fall asleep in the middle and couldn't tell you anything about them. So. Right. Right. Wow. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> but being sick in this period of time, uh, I'm not so sure that the anxiety isn't worse than the illness of is this Corona? Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and the one big sin, you know, when you watch those people who are sitting at home and they do have Corona mm -hmm. and they tell you about what it's like, every single one of them says sniffles and runny nose. I didn't have that at all. Well, I always have sniffles and a runny nose, so I'm, I don't worry about that. Uh, but no, but uh, I, uh, I, I, there's somebody I know that may have it. The doctor said pr probably is Corona or whatever, and he's staying home, and he doesn't have sniffles. He has. Uh, I, uh, did he say he had a cough? I can't remember. But he he said he had a temperature. That was the main clue, you know. Well, I mean, any kind of flu, you have a temperature, so that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. So, but you're feeling better today, is what you're saying? I'm a little better today. I mean, I don't have a temperature, which you know how that makes your head feel like it's wrapped in cotton batting and you can't right, think and right, right. all of that. But I'm, but I really want to say that the, it's the anxiety. Am I going to die here in my bed all by myself and nobody knows? You know, um, that's uh that kind of, you know, keeps creeping into your temperature tainted thinking. <laughs> and, uh, um, and yesterday I, ha oh, and, uh, I, on Saturday it was bad enough that I called the medical center where I have all my doctors and treatments. And of course I couldn't talk to a doctor. They're busy, I guess. But, um, I talked to some doctor who was on call for mm -hmm. all this and, she just told me to stay. I, oh, I also, because I have COPD, I was having heavy breathing problems. Mm -hmm. And there, that is all the rest of it I could live with. That I really can't yeah, stay. Yeah, yeah. And so um, I, uh, she said she didn't think I needed to go to the emergency room. And, uh, but that if the breathing got worse, and I was really having trouble getting any air in to call 911 and go to the emergency room. Right. That didn't happen. It got better. Um, and also, you know, I have oxygen here. So I was using oxygen that helped. Right. Um, so uh, so yesterday I had my first telehealth, telehealth appointment. Right, right. My um, Marjorie had one of those yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is it, it, it's a new, it, it's another part of the new normal. But go ahead, tell us about your uh, your tele. Well, you go ahead. I mean, you, no, you know. No, no, no. I'm just mentioning that this seems to be a common thing now to in order to handle things. In it's this been around crisis. for a long time. This is nothing new. Yeah. It, it's it's. I mean, you could say that's what I had last Saturday too. Yeah. Um, but it was with my palliative care provider and uh and what i asked most importantly was 
what is dying of coronavirus like? He had told me that there were almost no beds at that hospital where mm -hmm. in that complex. Right. And that certainly probably no ventilators, which someone like me would need a ventilator to live. Right. Uh, if I were that sick. And, um, and I thought about that, and you know, he's a palliative care guy, so we talk about these things. Um, of that, if it came to that, that if I have coronavirus, that they should let me go, because I'm an old woman, you know, I've I've led most of my life. Um, but I asked him what the dying was. I'm scared of dying of not being able to breathe, of how awful that would be. Mm -hmm. To try to get your breath and not. Mm -hmm. And he said that there are drugs that they can give you that make that to ease that and ease the pain. Um, and that it would take a few days. But he literally said to you that because of your age, they probably wouldn't treat you. No, oh, I didn't oh, say that. Oh, you said Take that back. I don't want anybody oh, in the oh, audience oh, oh. hearing that. Well, no, the reason I'm ask, I asked you that is because that's how it kind of sounded that you said that because you were uh, of your age. No, no, no. I said that. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Good. Because the latest thing coming out of Italy is they're telling their doctors do not treat anybody over the age of 60. Well, you know, and so are they saying it here. I mean, you know, there's the, the, the lieutenant governor of Texas just said that every one of us old people, it's up to us to stand up and take the virus. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my, oh, my. Yeah. Um, you know. So now I want to go back to that. I want to be really clear. Yeah. I said that. Oh, okay. All right. I, I said that. Okay. I just wanted uh, to, I just wanted to clarify that. That's all. I didn't think I was unclear, <laughs> so, and that's really, really important. I mean, it's yeah. not it's not a joke, yeah. and it's not laughable, and it's really important that a doctor did not say that to me. But it is it is true that, I mean, I uh, heard several doctors, when asked the question about age, said that if there are only two, one ventilator, and there are two patients, and one of them is 80 and one of them is 40, I'm giving it to the one who's 40. You know. I haven't seen that. Yeah, I, I, I heard that in a discussion. Uh, doctors make having. those decisions, but I think that they're on the spot. I mean, if you've got a 40-year-old that's going to die anyway, whatever you do, and an 80-year-old that might survive, I think you'd see a doctor doing the reverse. But they're making those ventilators work for two people at a time. They're trying. They're testing it here in New York, is what they said. That's what... Cuomo said today, they're testing it. It's well, a possibility. Well, somebody else said it two days ago, Fauci, yeah. I think. Yeah. He said it's a possibility. They're not sure they can get them to work that way, but if they can, it takes some rearranging uh, of the electronics or whatever to do it. But if they can do that, that will help with the problem because here in New York, we've got, what, what did he say? I, I don't even, I can't remember the number, something like 4,000 ventilators and we're going to need 30,000 within 15 days. That's, you know, so they're going to have to figure out some way to double up on ventilators and so on. So If they can, you know, yeah. you can't you can't go around saying you must when nobody knows how. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we, we have a president here that uh, that uh, is already wanting people to get back to work. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. he's thinking more about the economy than he is about the public health. Well, and it's just going to kill everybody at work then. Well, uh, you know, I mean, I agree that if somebody has had it and it's been resolved, they could go back to work safely, okay? I've also read one long article on recurrences after mm -hmm. you've been cleared. Mm -hmm. Until we know if that's true or right. not, you can't be sending people back to work. Well, uh, uh, Cuomo said they're working, they have a test which they're going to maybe release tomorrow that will be able to tell whether you've had it and it's been resolved. OK, uh, and if that's the case, they can say that certain people at least can be can do certain things, maybe like helping other people uh, by going and, and helping older people who uh, need help and don't want to get infected. And if they've resolved, they will not infect them. It's 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 a whole, you know, all of this is and Cuomo's been very good about this. He says 
all of this is just things we're looking at. You know, he said the reality is this, and then he gives you the realities of the number of beds, the number of ventilators, what the I'm need will it, be. I understand. Yeah, he's very. I don't know if you've seen him, but yes, I just said I yeah. had. I, we're going to clean out your ears, okay? That's yeah. twice he, today. He, 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 Oh, don't be cranky just because you're sick. I am really cranky, so be <laughs> you're, Today you are the crabby lady that you talk crabby about. Old lady. Crabby old lady. Uh, he, Cuomo, I mean, I wish he were president right now in handling this crisis because he, he really does a wonderful job of it. I watch him every day and I go, it's not, he's not telling me everything's going to be fine and everything's going everything's to be wax lips and roses. He says, here's what the situation is. And then he talks about the other toll, which is the emotional toll it's taking on people and how to deal with that. He said, you know, here's the good news. If you're at home with your kids, here's a real chance to bond with your kids again and not have to go to work. You know? Sure, well, they're in the other room. Yeah, but uh, it, it's... This I, is, I, that's a little far-fetched. <laughs> I, am, I am so upset with our president only because he's just not the leader we need in a situation like this. Okay. Oh, you haven't been upset with him before? Well, I was upset with him before, but I mean, now it's the time, you know, there are people that I've hated like Rudy Giuliani, but I had to admit that when it came to nine 11, he handled it well. Could I know? interrupt here a minute? Yeah, sure. Whatever happened to Rudy Giuliani? Where he, is he? He, he, dis he disappeared off the face of the planet. <laughs> I, I actually think that there's a segment of the Trump administration that offs people. Uh, and, and I think they may have just gotten to Fauci because Fauci hasn't been seen I'm for really, a couple of I'm, days. I'm so up. When I tuned in yesterday and he wasn't there. Yeah. And of course, everybody on the podium was all standing shoulder. We're all standing shoulder to shoulder mm -hmm. um, while we're supposed to be eight feet apart or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, Never mind. I, yeah. I, I, but, there's nothing right, absolutely zero right going on from the Trump administration or anybody in it. Well, if in fact they pushed Fauci out, that is a huge error in judgment, you know, because he's the guy you listen to. He's your go to guy. You know? Yes, we understand. We all know that. <laughs> Everybody knows that. But we all know Trump's smarter than anybody else. You know, I, I have no patience with that kind of stuff anymore. I mean, it, it's, I just have no patience. There is nothing, there is nothing good that can be said about that man. The less we say, the better off we are. And if you are the praying sort uh, or whatever it is that you do to contact the gods, then you have to just pray that he doesn't kill us all. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what he's going to do. Yeah. Um, well, I'll tell you what was interesting uh, that Cuomo talked about today. He said he got a hold of the uh, Health and Services Department or whatever that cabinet post is. The government is holding on to 20,000 ventilators. Yes, I heard that. Yes. And what he said to them was, look, what you do is you release them to the state, the state that is most needy, which is ours, because we have about 10 times the infection rate of any other state in the union. A lot of it has to do with density of population and the fact that we're doing more testing. He said, we need those ventilators. When we're through with them, I, at the cost of New York City, will send it to another state that needs them. That's the way it should be done. Not like, well, this has, this state has so much, so we'll apportion 10 to them and 20 to another and whatever. He said, you go to the place that's ground zero, you take care of that, then you move those ventilators elsewhere. He said, I'll ship every ventilator in this state out to another state if we don't need them. You know? And he, so the thing about Cuomo is he at least has some kind of solutions you know, and, and the logical solutions. Our president is doing none of that. Our government is doing none of that. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. and, um, I'm past railing about it. It's, I'm so far past it. People well, are dying left and right. What I'm so happy about is that we're going to save the cruise ships. <laughs> you know, 
I don't know about oh, that. Oh, the, the president I'm, has I'm, been saying we have I don't to. Want, come on, go to, on to something else. We, we have to Nobody bail cares. out the cruise ships. Yeah. Where no. were the where He'll was bail it? out whoever he wants? But let's just let's let's. I, I just I can't stand them. I used to not be able to stand his voice. I now cannot stand his name, and I just I don't want to hear. Yeah, you know, yeah. I just don't want to hear. Well, all I'm saying. I can read the headlines. I know what he does. That's all I need. All I'm saying about cruise ships is they're floating petri dishes. They've always caused some kind of illness. You know, we hear those stories every other week. So anyway, um, so uh, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the uh, how was the play? Uh, you know how uh, you're feeling better. So that's good I'm news. Today I'm getting very tired. It's ten twenty here, and I've been up since five thirty. And I also, you know, what? It, it just I'm still so amazed. I never quite get accustomed to it. But the exercises that they taught me in pulmonary rehab help my breathing so much. And when I don't, which I didn't exercise for the near week I was sick. It wasn't, I, I don't don't believe it was whatever is wrong with me that was so much causing the breathing. It's I wasn't doing the exercises every morning. Yeah. So this morning, um, after I ha always have to have a cup of coffee first, if you'd like me mm -hmm. to move around at all. Um, so I had the cup of coffee and I started the exercises and I was doing pretty well. And the phone rang when I was about 20 minutes into them. And so that was a good excuse to stop. Because yeah. as much good as they do for me, I hate it. I just hate it. Uh, so I use that. At, oh, I've been sick, so I only did 20 minutes today. But tomorrow I'll do better. <laughs> yeah, that was the one thing that we had in common. Uh, exercising is something we didn't particularly like. We know you have to Not do it. Particularly, it's spell it. H-A-T-E. <laughs> I hate it. I just hate it. I've done it all my life, and I don't. I just can't stand it. And, you know, I don't play physical games. I don't play baseball. I don't play whatever things, grown-ups, games they play. Um, and uh, I wasn't any good at them in school, and I'm not going to make that mistake again. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so uh, anyway, we'll see if I'll do it. But, you know, I got it 20 minutes in. I was just doing it this morning to see how far I could get without wearing out. And I yeah. got... I, w I was good. ready to keep going if the phone hadn't rung. Good, good, good. Well, you're uh, obviously you're on the mend, so you know maybe it wasn't the coronavirus, but certainly uh, with your condition, uh, any kind of cold you get or whatever is is more serious than it would be to somebody else, you know, because well, of the COPD. It's the, it's the, the, doc the doctor said yesterday, you know, yeah. the thing about coronavirus because I have COPD when I. I asked him, I think, did I say this earlier? I'm still fuzzy headed a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That I, uh, um, oh, God damn, <laughs> I what I was saying. Um, oh, I asked him yeah. what about dying of it, and yeah. what it was like. I mentioned that. And the thing is that with, with the, as bad a COPD as I have, there's no living through coronavirus. When I said that to him, he agreed with me. Yeah. Um, so uh, f I guess it's not unless, you know, I have the vaguest memory that I've seen a couple of people interviewed, but this was during the period of time I had a temperature, so God knows what I heard. But I think I heard that at least a couple of people who were interviewed who were stuck at home because they have the virus, um, said that they'd had some light symptoms in the beginning and then they disappeared and they thought they were better and then they got slammed. I may be wrong because I was pretty out of it when I was trying to watch television those few days. Yeah. But um, but so I'm kind of holding my breath now to see if anything mm -hmm. comes back. I have not been out of the house for a week now. <laughs> I have not left the apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Marjorie has gone out to the store and then quickly come back. She goes down with a mask and gloves, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I haven't left is uh, they say, well, if you're uh, over 80, tick, okay, 
and have cancer, tick, all right, uh, you, you're more subject to this. You know, you're more liable to have a serious situation. So I am just, I'm, I'm just, I'm afraid to go out. You know. Well, it, it's a lot of work to go out. I have to go to the pharmacy today. Yeah. And you know, so because there's no such thing as hand sanitizer, I've got a little bit now mm -hmm. that someone gave me. But um, I think far more effective are gloves. Mm -hmm. And I happen to have a box of 200 of them. Yeah, here. we have them too. Yeah. And from something else. So um, I always, I have a whole lot of gloves in the, <laughs> in the glove compartment of the car. <laughs> and, um, and I always shove a two or three pair in my pocket. And I think those are more effective than hand sanitizer anyway. Um, and I'm, it, my pharmacy is in the supermarket. Mm -hmm. And I saw in the local paper that they were retrofitting the checkout aisles with self-checkout. Ah, good. So I'm interested in saying, no, yeah, I don't think it's good. I don't want to pack my own groceries. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, you know, you do what you have to do. And um, so I'll check that out while I'm there today and do a little bit of shopping as long as I'm in the building. Are you wearing a mask, too? No, there's no masks anywhere. I can, I'll never have a mask in my life. <laughs> they don't have enough at the hospitals here. How am I going Actually, to get we have a couple of them because, uh, first of all, uh, my wife's company had some. You told me you steal them, which I think... No, I didn't know, steal them. I was need the I was, hospital no, workers. I, 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 I was, ta I, I you was talking about gloves. I wasn't talking about those. Um, we were talking about masks. No, I wasn't. When I said I took stuff from the hospital, I always grabbed a couple of gloves. You told me face mask. No, we can go no, get the no, tape. No, no, I can get the tape. I didn't. I never said face mask because I never took a face mask. But anyway, she got a couple of face masks from her company. These are the N95s, and then our uh, what do you call it? our super here in the building said, "Wait a minute, let me go down and get you something." He came back with two masks, and we said, "Where did you get these?" And he says, "Oh, we have a ton of them downstairs because this is what we use when people work on apartments." so that they don't breathe in the dust and the asbestos or whatever. So uh, he got us a couple of those, you know, so. Is there asbestos in your building? Well, I don't know if there's asbestos anymore, but there there are a lot of contaminants and stuff when you're when you're working on when an apartment and yeah, tearing but, it apart. But asbestos in particular, you should be really clear about whether it's there or not. I, I think most of the asbestos is gone in this apartment house, but this is an old apartment house, 1900. You know. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you should be living yeah. with asbestos. But anyway, you know, they, 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 they churn up a lot of dust, and so they wear they have them wear the masks, and that's what those masks are. So. He should be sending them to the local hospital. Well, maybe he needs them for the people who work for him, you know, so. Yeah. The only people that need them, if they, are, if they are limited right now, are the people who put their life on their line to care for us. I'm sure he doesn't have hundreds of them downstairs. Let me put it that way. Okay. But he did get us a couple of them, and, uh, you know, we use them when we go to the store. I would have said that I do not have any gloves. And then I remembered this box from when I used to have to give myself injections. Mm -hmm. And it was a 200-count box. Mm, yeah. So, you know, you use one pair a day. That doesn't. Uh, that leaves me lots and lots. Yeah. So, and if you're only going out of the house once or twice a week, that what's left can last me a lot. I'd send half of them to a friend in New York City because you can't find gloves anywhere in New York City. Right. You can't hear either. Well, Marjorie for bought some for some reason, and we have a box of them, you know, so. Um, so, but I just, the hospital workers, I don't know how they go to work every day with the lack of protection. And they just, I, I know that, you know, as much as fuzzy headed from a temperature, me was worried and frightened about what I might have when I was so sick. Um, I uh, I can't imagine what it's like to get up and go to the hospital every day. Right. And you've got children at home or a right. husband or a wife or perhaps, you know, your your mother or father live with you. Mm -hmm. um, I, it, it's it's just so frightening. Hey, we run out of time. 
We did. Oh, yeah. What a look at what we've moaned and groaned to the whole thing. Well, it's it's it, it's the main moaning and groaning these days. It's a main topic of conversation. Get better. Feel good. I'm much much better. I'm okay. just. I realized now. I'm just wearing down. That. I probably need a nap, you know. Time goes by dot net. That's where you'll find Ronnie Bennett, and every couple of weeks you'll find her right here. Thank you, Ronnie. You're welcome. Thank you, darling. <laughs>